Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm down on Calvert Street by the Battle Monument which of course is dedicated to those who lost their lives defending our city in the War of 1812 but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today to help celebrate and remember an event that took place in the middle of May 1870. You see the Battle Monument and adjacent Monument Square were a place of public celebrations and on May 19th 1870 uh, we celebrated the passage of the 15th amendment uh, the amendment giving black Americans the right to vote or more accurately adult black men the right to vote the celebration here with 20,000 people was the largest in the nation and uh, had national implications and so what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about the 15th amendment and then we'll turn to the celebration that happened here but let me start by reading the words of the 15th amendment uh, they're simple uh, but poignant uh, it says, Section 1, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous servitude. And then Section 2, the Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. So uh, giving uh, black men the right to vote and then giving Congress the right to make sure that that happened. Um, but still in the 1860s, uh, there were lots of obstacles for black men to vote, uh, like poll taxes and literacy tests. Um, not as a coincidence, right next to us is the Clarence uh, Mitchell Jr. Courthouse. Uh, Clarence Mitchell, the Baltimorean civil rights activist who in 1965 uh, helped get through Congress the instrumental 1965 uh, voting Rights Act using the second part of that 15th Amendment uh, to make sure that things like poll taxes and literacy tests uh, would be abolished. Um, the 15th Amendment was really the third in a series of three amendments adopted after the Civil War. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery. The 14th Amendment gave citizenship rights uh, equal protection under the laws to all Americans. Um, president Ulysses S. Grant, uh, a Republican, was president at the time and the Republicans were the champions of the 15th Amendment. Uh, they certainly had moral righteousness on their side, uh, but they also had hard-nosed uh, political practicality on their side. Um, they knew if they could get millions of black men to the polls in the South, most of them would vote Republican, so a strong incentive there. Um, so the amendment passed Congress uh, over the objection of the Democrats, and then the fight went to the states. Uh, New England states and Midwestern states were really the first uh, to adopt, first to ratify its passage. Um, and uh, by the early winter of 1870, things looked pretty good, but when New York uh, decided that it wanted to try to rescind its prior ratification, uh, the ground began to shake. And there was a final push to get the three quarters states necessary uh, to adopt an amendment uh, to get to that three quarters mark. And in February of 1870, Georgia, Nebraska, Texas, and Iowa uh, got us over the finish line. In Maryland, Governor Odin Bowie led the charge against ratification. Um, he had the unanimous support of every single member of our state House of Delegates and every single state senator uh, rejecting uh, ratification of the 15th Amendment. We wouldn't ratify it until 1973. Amazingly, we were not the last state to ratify it. Kentucky didn't ratify until 1976, and uh, Tennessee didn't ratify it until 1997. Um, upon its passage back in 1870s, Pre uh, President Grant uh, said this, quote, this completes the grandest civil change and constitutes the most important event that has occurred since the nation came to life. And black communities across the nation uh, celebrated, which brings us to the celebration uh, here in Baltimore. Ours was, again, the biggest in the, uh, the country with 20,000 people and with headliners like uh, Frederick Douglass and Mississippi Senator uh, Hiram Revels, uh, we really brought in a national crowd. Um, the event was a parade and a rally. The parade was enormous, five hours. It started on uh, Broadway in Fells Point with uh, a gentleman, Colonel William Saunders uh, as Grand Marshal. 
It went through Seton Hill, uh, up Orchard Street, called the Black Fifth Avenue of Baltimore, and past Orchard Street Church, one of the city's oldest black churches, whose congregation had started 20 or more years uh, before then. It went through Pigtown along Washington Boulevard, and then up through probably the most uh, elite white neighborhood of the time, uh, Mount Vernon. And then it ended here on Monument Square for a uh, really a rally, a series of speakers. There had been a scaffold erected uh, here on the, the Monument Square grounds. Um, and in a lighthearted moment, what turned out to be a lighthearted moment, uh, the speakers had all climbed up on the scaffolding and then it fell down. Nobody was hurt. And Frederick Douglass joked uh, that it must have been erected by Democrats. We don't know whether that was true or not. Um, the rally was led by a gentleman named Isaac Myers. If you know the Frederick Douglass Isaac Myers Maritime Museum uh, in Fells Point. That's our Isaac Myers, a prominent, nationally prominent uh, ship repair owner and uh, workers' rights champion. Um, he concluded his marks uh, by saying that this was the greatest, grandest, and most important gathering of colored men in Maryland or in the whole country. Um, the speakers, in addition to him, included the Postmaster General James Creswell. Uh, Frederick Douglass was really the keynote speaker. He talked talked about growing up enslaved on Maryland's eastern shore, um, and then ended uh, his speech by saying, uh, quote, with the passage of the 15th Amendment, we must stand up and be responsible to our fellow citizens as independent men. Um, I'm going to wrap up by just uh, mentioning briefly, there were at least three or four lithographs that were created uh, celebrating the event here in Baltimore. Um, they had images of people like abolitionist John Brown, uh, President Abraham Lincoln, Isaac Myers and Frederick Douglass, the speakers, and then images of things like the Constitution, uh, uh, black teachers teaching students, um, and then the parade itself. They were sold as a sort of uh, public artwork uh, to help spread the message of the 15th Amendment and then honoring the celebration uh, here in Baltimore. So the next time you're down here, maybe for jury duty or just passing by, uh, stop by the Battle Monument and certainly think of those who lost their, lost their lives in the Battle of Baltimore, but also think about the celebration that happened here on May 19th, 1870, uh, giving black men the right to vote. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.